Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I am your host, Sonot the Hero Type, and I haven't spoken to you guys in quite some time. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Unfortunately, I've been very busy. I've been trying to stream a little bit more, but I really wanted to get back into the YouTube. I sound like an old man when I say it that way. Anyways, besides that point, I want to introduce you guys to my newest series. Uh, we're going to be calling it Hyper Realism Overhaul because that was the best name I could come up with, and I quite enjoy it. Now, to kind of give a short idea of what we're going to be doing, this will be a story cinematic type thing. We're not going to have build videos. Although, once we get past the intro stuff, I might just do like a separate setup of build videos and times four behind the music. But I'm rambling. The short of it is, we're going to be doing RP1 career like normal without reverts or quick saves, but we're also not going to be using simulations. In the past, we've also allowed ourselves to use quick saves for like Kraken attacks and glitches. That is no longer the case. Whatever happens, happens, and we deal with it. Let's go over to the KSC so I can kind of introduce you to the changes that's going to be in this playthrough. And then we'll go ahead and get into the actual video. And as always, thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you enjoy. And because YouTube recommends it, if you guys like the video, give it a like. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. But enough of that. On to the KSC, we go. Now, one of the biggest changes for the series outside of the no simulations is we're going to be using Principia. I am not very familiar with Principia. I tried it a while ago and it did not work out. Uh, like always, we're going to use the split uh, space plate hanger and vehicle assembly building because I just prefer it that way. And like always, we're going to drop our first point in the VAB. Now, again, we're not going to be doing the build videos. We're just going to go straight to the launching and the cinematics. Um, I do have a little bit of something that I'm going to be adding and you'll see it when we get to it. This will be a mostly scripted series, so hopefully that does kind of uh, increase the level of um, quality of the content, I guess. I don't know how else to say that. Uh, the other thing we did was we limited the funds. So again, no quick saves, no quick loading, no reverting, no simulations, Principia. I'm making this as hard as I physically can outside of building a rocket in real life. So hopefully we make it a decent amount of time in the series and nothing goes too terribly wrong. But I guess we'll get there when we find out. This will be a little bit of a longer series. But without further ado, let me introduce you to the brand new, New Standard Aerospace Company. It was January 1st, 1951, when New Standard Aerospace Company stepped foot on their brand new space center for the very first time. As they looked around in glory and awe and what they could achieve, knowing they had one simple and one monumental task ahead of them, and that was to explore space and beyond. But we don't dare to explore space because we think it will be easy. We do it because we know it's going to be hard, and this will be a monumental task the team has been preparing most of their adult life for. To push mankind to the heavens and beyond. No small task, but a task they were willing to undertake. Without hesitation, as soon as they got acquainted with the new surroundings, the engineering team set out to design their very first rocket. Although small and humble, they knew it was exactly what they needed to make their first steps to achieve their first launch to better understand the science behind sending something into space. Determined, stubborn, and possibly out of their mind, the engineering team went to work to design the very first rocket that would ever be launched from their new home a rocket that would hopefully pave the way to their ultimate goal of exploring space. This is a dream, this was their goal, and this is their story. After borrowing some technology from the United States Air Force, the team set out to make its very first rocket, the WASP-1. The WASP-1 had one simple goal, to be the very first launch we have ever done not only to dignify us as a space company, but also to complete a government contract that would pay out roughly $5.2,000. Although small, this was hopefully the rocket that was going to help us take our first steps into achieving greatness. A two-stage rocket using a tiny Tim booster and an aerobeam main stage. The main stage sitting at approximately 3.4 meters in height with an estimated 47 seconds of burn time this rocket was hopefully going to reach heights of upwards of 75 kilometers equipped with a barometer and a temperature scanner to test the upper atmosphere the team rolled it out to the pad and got ready to hope for the best as the rocket ignited 
The separation stage failed, causing this rocket to spiral out of control. Mayhem ensued on the pad as everyone watched in horror as the thing they spent three months building started to go off course and they worried it may eventually find its way to a civilian population. The range safety officer's hand on the button ready to press it at any time, they watched and waited to see what exactly would happen with their now failing rocket. As the engine kept burning its full 47 seconds, reaching higher and higher altitudes, the team were hopeful that they get at least some data from this launch. Even though it was a bit of a failure, they still technically completed their first contract. And that, that was enough success for them. They could go home happy knowing they achieved something. As the rocket came tumbling back down, the team noticed they lost the nose cone as well as three wings due to possible stress or spiraling. Telemetry showed they hit a height of 27 kilometers and a max speed of 661 meters a second. Noticing the rocket was on course, splashed down in the ocean, all tenses were eased. The data that we retrieved would help us further our space program, but this did not go as well as we had hoped. Hoping next time we could do better. The engineers quickly rewrote the launch procedure program to hopefully defeat the decoupling issue they had. The team watched in awe as the rocket came spiraling down and crashed into the ocean. In early May, the second WASP-1 was rolled out to the pad to hopefully achieve a new contract of reaching at least 60 kilometers and hopefully even 100 kilometers to break the Kármán line. After spending $20,000 to update their R&D department, better engines are researching, but that takes time. Once they completed their first launch contract, they were well on their way to get more government funding and hitting more milestones. This time, the rocket almost separated perfectly as the WASP rocket soared into space, flying higher than ever before. Like its brother before it, it managed to burn its full 47 seconds of burn time, achieving an altitude of 83 kilometers and a max speed of 1,073 meters a second. We got great data from the upper atmosphere and great temperature data as well. Unfortunately, we did not achieve hitting the 100K Carmen Line mark for a government contract, but the 60K mark was successfully hit. Between the government contracts and the grants given for breaking milestones, the team was well on its way to be able to fund more and more expensive endeavors and hopefully design a much bigger rocket. The team sat back in awe as they watched the telemetry data climb higher and higher and higher. Noticing it was back on an impact course for the ocean out of harm's way, the team sat back and watched as the rocket once again impacted the big blue waters of this planet we call Earth. Another success for the team. Understanding the need for a slightly bigger rocket, the WASP-2 was born. With a slightly longer main tank at 2.5 meters, everything else was the same. This particular rocket had closer to 2,000 meters of delta V, as well as a 51 second burn time. Although pushing the rated burn time for the engine, the team was hopeful it could succeed in its goal of breaking the Kármán line. The rocket was rolled out on July 1st of 1951, and it was prepped for launch. The team gathered around as they waited for the ignition sequence to start and hopefully see a rocket actually break the common line and enter space. As the rocket was ignited, once again, the plague of a separation issue happened, but this time the rocket held on for the most part. With an initial wobble veering slightly off course, the team watched in anticipation while once again the range safety officer had his hand on the button to detonate the rocket in case of any catastrophe waiting to happen. But as they sat back and watched, the rocket mostly straightened itself back out and continued on a straight up course, hopefully breaking the 100 kilometer mark that the team was hoping to achieve. 51 seconds of burn time, the engine successfully held out for all of it and managed to reach a new height of 92.8 kilometers and speeds exceeding just over 1,121 meters a second. Although new milestones would be achieved with this launch, they failed to reach the Kármán line and enter space, which means no contract funding nor any new opportunities from the local governments. They did, however, pick up a small contract to reach 70 kilometers 
for a college doing a local science experiment and they were happy with the results. As Mission Control sat back and watched telemetry data go higher and higher above previous launches, they noticed that as soon as it hit about 92.8 kilometers, it started to come back down to Earth. As with all other launches before it, the rocket was coming back on an impact course with the ocean. With this, the range safety officer eased up as he relaxed knowing that no one would be harmed. During the return trip, the scientists analyzed the telemetry data coming back from the rocket as it got closer and closer to the thicker parts of the atmosphere. Using this data, hopefully, to possibly land something somewhat in the near future. The team celebrated as the rocket came crashing down because now it was time for bigger and better things. Unfortunately, due to budget disputes, the team was not able to fully design their next rocket, the Hornets. This prototype tank using an engine borrowed from the United States Air Force, the A-4 engine, was going to have to do for initial testing. Unfortunately, due to the borrowed tech, not all data would be kept by the company as some of it had to go to the United States military. Despite being unhappy with their half-finished prototype, the team rolled out the new test rocket on October 23rd, 1951 to prepare to go through all ignition sequences and hopefully achieve breaking the Kármán line. The rocket was prepped and fueled and the team sat by as it was getting prepped for ignition. Being a rocket that does not require a kick stage, the rocket would have to spool it first, the cord would be dropped, and the rocket would be launched. The team sat back as the rocket was sent on its way into space. The loud roar of the engine was heard as it was a much bigger engine than anyone had heard previously. Using spin stability, the rocket started to climb and suddenly the engine cut out, causing the rocket to fail in its mission. The rocket barely achieving seven kilometers above the surface, the range safety officer was given the go ahead to explode the rocket, preventing any damage from it falling back down. That was a short-lived life of their latest prototype and the end of their very first year. With the team being slightly demoralized, a second prototype of the Hornet rocket was drafted to be built and prepped to be launched early next year in February. The achievements made this year were great, but not what we hoped for. Maybe yet next year we can finally conquer breaking the Kármán line and officially reaching space.